Hello and welcome to the 2023 Portland Open presented by Latitude 64. You are watching round two coverage from Glendevere Golf and Tennis on Joe Mesh Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Collins, and Paul Ulibar. We got a beautiful, beautiful day. Another beautiful day here in Portland. No rain expected in the forecast, which has just been pretty incredible considering we are in the rainy Pacific Northwest here. And it is another wonderful day. The wind is going to be calm and the talent is going to be immense. Aaron Gossage, a player that no one is surprised is doing well on this style of course, is currently in a five-way tie for the lead at eight under par. Corey Ellis, player who makes long drives and long putts look routine. 100% C1 scramble, 100%. I got to see that in the first round. It was impressive. Hopefully he can continue that into the second round. Isaac Robinson, a player who broke out here at this event last year, is looking to continue the trend of playing well here in Portland. Adam Hammes, big forehand, big backhand, obviously the big putts as well. Birdie percentage, 56. That is an incredible rate at this course. Two bogeys in the first round to tie the course record at eight under. Good day. Let's get into hole one. Par four, 741. Saw it yesterday, but just tough bunkers kind of right here. The gap's pretty tight as well. You're going to see a bunch of turnovers, maybe some sidearms to get in position. It's all about the upshot here as long as you stay in bounds off the tee. And it just gets tricky. I think it's one of the best holes on the course. Yeah. Right here. <clears throat> on a little mound, that basket is. And so it's sloped all the way around where all the trouble is. So it makes putting super challenging what a weapon to be able to go forehand off the tee here I mean, you really want a bunch of distance to make that approach shorter and gosses can get that distance just with the hyzer forehand most players going backhand turnover there was a bit of a you can see a latitude 64 uh feather banner there it's blowing a little bit right to left which makes this backhand turnover want to Drift closer to that left side OB than uh, other rounds. And this one might be in this danger. This is actually kind of scary right here. You don't want to see that edge at all. Yeah, that's definitely going out of bounds. This was a common mistake that a lot of players were having. A very fine line for that particular shot. You have that right to left wind, so as soon as that disc turns over, it can very easily bury to the right. And so if it's too much hyzer, as soon as it gets, or if you miss that angle and it gets too much hyzer, as soon as you miss to the left at all. Yeah. Here's a guy who yep. hasn't missed an angle in months. Yeah, that's a, uh, you got to play against that wind and then look at that. Just perfect flight plane. The guy doesn't. Yeah. The guy thinks about where he wants it to go and it goes there. It that's might right. not go 600 feet, but it goes plenty far and it goes right where he wanted it to mm -hmm. almost every time. And that's why he's been so hot this la these last couple of months. He definitely got good distance off of that, but I do still think he's pretty tight on the right side, which doesn't make the upshot any easier than the other guys. Sure. But then imagine your angle. You just know your angle is going to be perfect. Ooh, this is not a good angle. Yeah. This is gone. Adam Hammes going. Yeah, he needs help. That's got to be out of bounds by a long way, I think. Yeah. Oh, almost gets a fantastic <clears throat> break off the tree. And these are going to be, I mean, Corey, I was about to say Corey's approach is going to be pretty long, but Adam's is going to be, I mean, this is full forehand now. And this, yeah. this is danger mode. It's a little uphill. And I, I mean, this hole, it's an, it's an island green. I mean, effectively, right? I mean, yeah, effectively. with as much sand as there is, like, sure, it's not technically an island hole, but it's the same stress level. Of, of coming into this pin because any miss, basically any miss, is in the sand. I think he got a good break by hitting that tree. I, I thought that might have been going towards that bunker. So at least he gets a good oh, break. It, Gossage, forehand, forehand. Way to draw it up and execute yeah. it. Well done. That's weird how the angle looks so good. <laughs> it's not yeah. that weird. <laughs> <laughs> Execution on point as well there for Isaac. Such a tough shot from there, though. He makes it look easy, but that's not where I'd want to be as a player. No. Oh, no. Yeah. 
an important approach here for Corey. This is going to be mm. heading onto the golf green, and that's going to set up a putt near the circle's edge, maybe I don't know if it's inside the circle or not, but that's going to be for the bogey. Very, very important putt coming up for Corey. And that putt was for par. A moment ago, you might have seen the little ticker. There's a little reminder that we are giving away a trip to the World Championships. Round trip flights. Oh, Corey. Off oh, the cage. man. Oh, and a week's stay at Smuggler's Notch at the rates of those rooms. That is a big how, I mean, just giveaway. How cool is that? It, just in general. That's I mean, sweet. it's just uh, put it another thing on the list of things that I wouldn't have thought possible five years ago. Yeah, it's like right. a, a giveaway worth many thousands. You can go to Worlds or Gemini's can just give you $15,000, which is basically how much is that, that package is, is that, worth. I don't know if we should say that. No, I'm kidding. I don't know how much that is. I'm just but I don't think we're going to give you the money, basically is what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. We're definitely <laughs> not doing that. But the, these people who win this, they're going to want to go to Worlds. This, this is a no-brainer. Hole 2, par 3, 460. Downhill slightly, but wrapped on all sides by Out of Bounds. Nice little basket placement among these big boys down at the bottom forehands the safe play backhand on the right side a little bit more aggressive rollers an option as well but i don't expect to see it from our leaders i'm curious if gossage has the uh okay he's not going for it with the forehand i think he has it if he wants it yeah but he's he's clicking on a lot of cylinders so he, he doesn't have to this needs to actually get down there's not a lot oh of skips over gosh. there. Oh my gosh. But Whoa. if you do get them, it can reach that out of bounds. Wow. Go, just going long with a low ceiling on this 460, that's a huge drive from Gossage. Appears to have stayed in bounds, but pretty long putt left. I'm guessing the angle was hit pretty Yeah, precisely. you don't really mind that angle, do you? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's a nice shot. Just hangs it out a little wide. Distance is good. You'll you'll take that. This is this is absolutely a, a bonus birdie. I totally. mean, you you would love to get a putt. Parking it amazing, but let's see. Here's a here's a big forehand. See how aggressive he goes with this. Is he thinking deuce, or is he laying back here? The, the hard thing about reaching this one, not only I mean the four sixty, but there's that tr that initial tree, really makes that angle to get the Anheuser flex that you might like if you want to get to the the distance. Mm -hmm. Makes it really challenging. You can kind of see there just. It takes away that flex play. It's got to be all hyzer. Pretty low ceiling feeling, too, with the downhill. This looks really good from Corey. I got a question for both of you as we watch this one go past. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. I have an opportunity to make up for that double bogey on one. Goss from about 50. Yeah. But my question is, <clears throat> who do you think's more due for a win? Goss, Corey Ellis... Or Anthony. Uh, C, Matteo. Or D, Matteo. No. Or, or bring, we're, t we're talking A, B. I would, Golly, that's tough. That's, that's a really good one. I, man. Or Isaac with the sweet putter. Oh. oh I thought he made <laughs> I I don't know why. I'm not even going to explore why. My, my brain just said Corey. Okay. Oh, and I, I was going A, B. Okay. What's your answer? Mine? Mm-hmm. Matty O. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I think they're all right there. I, yes. I, uh, whoever's more due, I guess, is who's going to get the job done. Yes. Um, I feel like I feel like Corey's been at it a bit longer than the other the, the other two, probably. And I just feel like rec in recent memory, Corey's had some ju just as close as you could get. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking D Glow. I'm thinking MVP, MVP hurt. MVP It's really just hurt. been like on the last hole or in the playoff. I mean, Goose was running hot at OTB, but it, it, you know, he Worlds. fell short. It, he, yeah. He was way, he was even deeper at Worlds. Yep. So, yeah, no right answer, no wrong answer. Yeah. They're all I, fantastic. I guess my point is, is like, whoa. Yes. The yes. talent level is yes. insane. As we look at the at, at the leaderboard, all these guys have not won. We got Burridge right there. We got the new kid from Washington. Yeah, I want to mention him because Carter Aaron's 
think 15, maybe 16. No, I think Definitely he's not 17. Like, yeah. I think he might be 15. Yeah. He was a victim of his young age and PDGA number to not be in this group. He came into right. this round tied for the lead. He's playing like a monster right now. Yeah. He, it's going to be obviously 15 years old. It's going to be hard for him to hold his mental all the way to the finish line, but we will see. I mean, the guy's talent is way up there. Corey with a nice bounce back birdie, making the putt from the edge of the circle. And look at this Heiser shot. This this shot is so difficult. The low ceiling, there is an option to go big, high, wide stall Heiser if you can kind of get the nose up underneath this branch and push it wide with a fast disc. But most players are going to probably try this wide skippy Heiser. The gap is very narrow, though. And it looks like, oh, my gosh, mm, so happen. close there for Aaron. That will happen. These big trees, what I want to point out is look at, at the bottom, how they all go a little bit wider. It's a perfect ramp. If you square up one of these trees, your <laughs> so disc true. is rolling away. Look at all around yeah, them. It's totally. actually kind of hilarious because I saw it so much. I'm like, what is up with these trees in this course? They're just, they're, everything's rolling away. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, they all have little ramps. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like rollers roll right up them yes. like 100 feet. They're just skateboards. <laughs> Discs are just skateboards depending on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah, very true. Big wheels. This is amazing. These are incredible drives. This yeah. hole is so technically challenging. For something that feels somewhat open, that last half of the hole is mm -hmm. so challenging. I mean, just that statistic you gave us in round one as we're looking at Goose here, that, that this hole and the 460-foot 14th yeah. average the same, same number. Thing. That's crazy because on the on the face of it, this hole looks quite simple. But those big trees at 50, 40 feet, they eat up so many people. It's just kind of hard to actually park it. Yeah, that that's that blew me away too. I mean, I I was kind of, I don't know why in my head I thought let's compare fourteen to three just to see, and it just happened to average the same exact number. You're a stats man. Yeah. Oh shoot, a little bit right for Isaac on that putt. The other funny one was I was actually predicting that there would be eighty percent or eighty yeah eighty percent uh, pars on hole eight, and it was eighty one percent. Mm. That was a pre-tournament prediction. You've been at this a long time. I, I like the stats. Corey, back-to-back -back birdies now. Get back to even par for the round. Helps right the ship. Gossage in for his par. All right, guys. How many people going for this green? I'm, I'm saying Isaac doesn't. I don't. The rest. If Corey sticks to his game do. plan from round one, he lays up. Okay, Corey is a is a game plan I guy. Th I think they all lay up. All? No. I can see Adam going for it, but yeah, it'll be you interesting might, you to could see. Could be right. I'm 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 excited for it. Here it is, the par four fourth. This is one where the course gives you an opportunity to get aggressive, but man, look at this tight landing zone over here. Not only is it tight, it is slopey, and that OB line is about 18 feet right of the pin and about 12 feet left of the pin. You do have some space deep to work with if you wanna get aggressive, but most people are probably gonna take the layup and split this hole in two. That is the layup play. Well done. The tricky part about this hole, if you do lay up, is the wind. You get so many lifts and drops from working both sides of the basket, whether it be coming from right to left or left to right. I've seen a lot of people throw quality shots, get lifts where they don't want to, and the OB is so close yeah. that everybody's just going out of bounds everywhere. I'm curious to see if these guys can make a correct win decision he's Gossage, got the speed he's, he's going downtown 
It, ooh, this, I think there's he's going a, left. There's in, I saw this yes. as I was playing the hole. I was thinking, why is no one doing this? Because there is inbounds over there. Yeah. There's a lot of inbounds over there, and that is inbounds. And Gossage is going to take a big chunk of the distance out yeah. right up there off the tee. I don't think we can say that's going for it. No, it's not going no, for it. No, it's not going it. for it. It's a layup. But I, I, I'm happy to see it because I... I noticed that as I was walking. Yeah. I was thinking, that looks to be all inbounds. That seems like a pretty doable play. Nice width trust here from Adam that does not have the speed. See, and that's part of it. Those yeah. greens are so grabby. Like, that looks perfect. It needs to slide over there. Mm. Doesn't. Yeah. And that's a big mistake. It's now, tough with the slow speed disc, yep. I think, right? Especially going forehand into that green. You have to go wide. You have to go something like the zone speed for Adam. And oh, look at no. that one. This hole is the second easiest, I think, partly because there were several eagles, I believe six eagles on the day. But it was also not hard to get to three. But, man, this hole is great because the scoring separation is huge. People are doing exactly what you're seeing here with two easy putters, but then you're going to see the mistakes made by hitting the green on the second. Ellis's layup was huge. He's all the way to the water. And this is what the goose had left. Okay. That is, I feel like maybe I should have tried that. Just throw, <laughs> throw kind of far and left. It is hard when we, I mean, essentially one practice day. You know, there's just sure. so many. It's the first time seeing this course this year. Yep. And, you know, you got two courses to practice. You don't have much time with all the obligations and the travel time and whatnot. Yeah, I, certainly. I mean, speaking from speaking as an elder statesman, I would say uh, prepping two 11,000 footers in three days is, <laughs> is difficult, <laughs> is difficult to uh, to get through, to get get a solid game plan and, and get not, into Wake up with an arm that feels like it still works? Well, I'll tell you this. I did try it, and going as far as he did, he was pin high. Yeah. So it's 480 to get to kind of where he Yeah, I'm he not was. going where he No, was. and short of that, there's a bunch of trees. Okay. And you can get under those, and then it's a low ceiling, mm -hmm. and then you got you have to clear a bunker, you have to clear the green, you yeah. got the OB deep. It's actually pretty. It can get you into big-time trouble unless you do throw the 480 height. Yep. Corey Ellis, starting with a double bogey, is now under par for the round. Sweet. And Aaron Gossage is only beating him by one, even though he has two birdies and two pars. Pretty good stuff there. Well, five, par three, four, 20. Straight through the middle of this gap. Blind shot up and over this rise, and then down to this nice, slopey green. This is a about a perfect DGPT level par three, I think. It just takes it takes a lot. You got to hit a gap. You need a nice turn. You need big distance. A lot of factors. This is Corey's Athena. And look at this thing mm. late turning. This is this is the best I've seen on this hole. This is exactly. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's exactly what he did in round one. That's the best shot I've seen by a. I don't think I've personally. I mean, I'm, I'm back there a ways, but I, I didn't see anybody in circle one on this hole. Uh, it's it's kind of funny. I'm the only person on my card both rounds to not be in the circle in this hole. So I'm kind of getting beat down by my yeah, competitors. You're, you're having different experiences than me. I saw all kinds of people get in the circle from rollers to wide turnovers to flippy discs, sidearms. Yeah, we're not, we, um, AMT time guys, we're not doing that stuff. We're kind of angle guy. Yeah, angle guys do it. Oh, angle guy angle did guys it. do it. That's, yep. pu that's beautiful. Just outside the circle, it appears. Uh, this is a. His, tell me, how big is the sidearm to carry it's it down? Big. There? It's, it's pretty big. big right? It's big. You have to get it. It has to be like moving left for a long time, unless you just have insane spin rate. That's a good forward roll. Uh, now it's a bad forward roll. I think what the the thing that Goose and Adam didn't do. It, they got the nose up. And I think if you can keep that forehand clearing the ridge by like five, 10 feet, mm -hmm. then you have a chance. But it, it, once oh. it's up and then you're going back downhill and the green is sloping down to the right, then I think you're probably not finding circle one. Adam thought he made that. I think he gave that the slow walk in. Just yeah, off the top. baby. That's a great birdie to pick up. There's your sidearm bird. And look at him. I love the energy there. He's got a lot of it. Yeah. 
Every putt made is a is a little fist pump. I like that. Giving yourself a little reward for job yeah. well done. I've yeah, had absolutely. one fist pump in two and a half years. <laughs> 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 Where I felt the putt was was meaningful. It, it, but he thinks every putt's meaningful yeah, because he's that. up there in the mix, they are. which, is, they which are. is incredible place to be mentally. Yeah, when you're up on the lead card. They, they deserve those fist pumps. Yeah. Corey's on fire. I mean, this, this course is, it doesn't give you a ton of birdies. Uh, I think we mentioned it on the first round. The birdies are to be had here on the first five or six holes. Mm. Um, and Corey's getting them. Yeah. Four down the last four. I think you get it, you get them on the front nine. And then you get them the last few of the back nine if you have like if you're in control you can really get like three four in a row to finish your round what i mean adam hammis was just a few inches high from a star frame there yeah i that's a hole that looked i must have looked easy to you guys at home that is a very challenging hole i hope it does. i don't think it looks easy at home i don't know maybe our fans are based on the players plays what i'm sure mean. here's here's what you tell the people at home. If you can make your disc do a late flip at 380, you're going to be golden on that hole. That's true. Yeah, after you hit two gaps. Yep. Late flip it at two or 380, and you might have a chance there. Yeah. 1180 par five here. Big tee shot. There's a roller option, but I've seen a lot of people go air shot just because it's downhill. Yeah, all the, all the big boys, I feel like they don't necessarily need the roller on the tee shot. I think second shot may be a more popular time to go to it. Corey, almost you can see that lighter oh, grass that there so far. if you get to the fairway that's a certified rip job like that is a long yeah. long tee shot yeah that is so far oh it does try the roller gets and blown ends up. up getting the air shot yeah <laughs> but it's through uh, both at once it's not a big air shot he's gonna have a uh, par on his mind from there I have seen the goose yeah. throw the farthest roller I have ever seen. Really? In person, on a real course. It was unbelievable. Maybe 800 feet. Wow. Flat. Wow. Well, maybe we'll see one of those. Yeah, he needs that. I mean, by calling par right out the gate, I, I think it's a good call because it's that second shot you have to get to the top. Yeah. And if you come up halfway up that hill, you just don't have the angle to get the distance and the accuracy. Plus, it's going to be blind. I think it was New World. Is that okay. Florida? Yes. Yeah. And then Jackson. the par five. Yeah. Like hole six. And he had uh, 180 feet in. Wow. Here Very it well. is. Climb it. It's looking pretty good. Can it get to its top? I don't think it's going to flip. No, yeah, it's not it's up just, the whole hill. But, but that's still good. Uh, you know what? It's not impossible for him to throw another roller mm -hmm. and maybe get yeah. there but mm -hmm. it's gonna be he's got a long journey ahead of him isaac not interested with any rollers does isaac ever throw rollers he's just an air shot guy right i think he's mostly an air shot guy why would you when you just oh I'll just hit a perfect angle mm -hmm. hat on back yeah i was gonna say cool guy hammus over here and yeah High enough. That climb is so, so tough. You guys want to see the top of the hill? I'm going to show you. Watch Corey. Yeah. yeah. Corey, Corey gets a lot of power behind his shots. Oh, he thinks he can do it with a forehand. Really? Jeez, come on. Really, Goose. I I, I really like, I like Aaron a lot. I like this, though. But I really hope he doesn't get all the way there, because that's going to really annoy me. Goose. That's a... That's pretty that's much pretty there. Good. Yeah. That's, that's pretty deep good. deep C2, though, right? I don't... Well, uh, maybe, mid, maybe mid. Might make the putt. Wow. That's... That's ambitious. That's ambitious is the right word. This is just a mid-range. <laughs> good shot. Little straddle. This is going to be in the 380 to 390 range. Probably a little bit more, maybe. Oh, man. Making Found that it, one though. look easy. Mm -hmm. Really hammering on the Anheuser, getting full flight out of that one. Great shot. That's a birdie. I just, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, wow, this is in two. Mm -hmm. God, I'm feeling jealousy, and I, 
I'm embarrassed to say it, but gosh, what a, what mm. I I've never seen the top of this hill. I don't think I ever will. Um, it's it's a uh, <laughs> it's these are amazing. Just to be up there and be able to see the basket, so nice. That's that's not very good though. Yeah, that was where he threw Yeah, that you're right about that. You're right about that. Wow, Gossage. Oh. So that was nearly that was the birdie putt. Yeah, that was the from hitting putt. the first tree. Yeah, and fortunate to get that flip up into an air shot a little bit, but yeah. Sure, but that's that's unbelievable. Oh, I'm man. Th- I'm thinking with good effort, with Aaron in this group, that this is a must get birdie hole. I think that's what they're saying off the tee. Yeah, if that's he's hitting first yes. available. Yes, and taking that much off. Oh, of it, another one. Little bit of wind picking up, maybe, but yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think they're thinking birdie for sure. This is just a three shot hole. I, I don't think if, if these guys hit the first gap, I don't think top of the hill is any kind of struggle. That's well, for sure. Yeah, well, watching Corey, how close he was, he's got 280 in. Yeah. Anytime you have the ability to have 280 in with nothing in the way, yeah. there's a small gap off the tee, but really that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, but and what's the, the what's the real distance on this hole? 1180 measured. But that hill's got to add at least a hundred or hundred. Yeah, it's 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 big. I mean, the tee shot being downhill helps, but yeah, it's it's a big, a big eleven eighty. Adam Hammes with the stroke on the card there with the only birdie. Alden Harris now currently in first place. Alden Harris just ripped off five birdies in a row on hole five, uh, four, five, six up the hill. Seven down the hill and right here, eight? and eight down the big hill. He just got that that five pack. Wow! He just got hole eight. Seven and eight back to back. Seven right here is no, no. easy thing. Four hundred seventy-five blind downhill with the sand pits, very much in play. Does he get through that? Yeah, a oh, little. little bit. That's decision. That's not really decision time anymore. I don't think you're not putting at the bunker. That's a full send, I think, coming up for Hamas. Whoa, just over it all. That's gotta be bunky. I think it's short. Yeah. Wow, it's I, good. It's good, but if mm. it misses that tree, that's. I don't think. That's incredible. Where you want to be four seventy five just. Thrown basically straight up. He said yesterday he's trying to throw Anheuser over that bush between those two trees in the background. I think that's exactly what he just did. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, yeah. He, I think he hit his line perfectly. Whether or not it's the right game plan, that's debatable, I suppose. But he definitely did what he said he was tr- set out to do. Well, I think he's in the circle. So I think we can agree that it's a pretty good play, a plan well executed. Aaron, a bit too low there, getting that cut roll. This is a little, maybe a little danger. If, it, uh, if they're throwing it at the tree and they actually hit it, it should be fine. But yeah, uh, but yeah. he's pretty close to the basket. Par, uh, as as you guys will know, sand hazard rules play it where it lies. He'll be fairly manageable to make his par save, I think. Touchy little upshot right here. Definitely. I'd rather be out to the side where he is than going straight downhill. It is a very fast approach. Goes to the long side. That's a safe play. He'll have an uphill putt for the par. Not his favorite range, though. No, it isn't. Yeah. I think he's... If he makes that, then he's rolling, I think. He's going to be feeling pretty good moving forward. This is Isaac's favorite range, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Smooth, easy. He did just miss one though on the on the prior hole, mm-hmm. hole for birdie, but that's a good save right there. He's missed a couple. He missed one on three. Yeah. He missed one on six there, both inside the circle. Very um, un Isaac like. I get as we we got to look at Corey going for this birdie, but I mean, oh, no, come on, I don't like that. Oh boy. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people saying, well, you put it at two. No, that was a d- deliver the man, the birdie, especially on this hole. You know, I mean, it's such a bonus birdie. Good putt from goose. What I was going to say about Isaac and his putting, I get the feeling just from his general body language and the, and the consistency he's shown when he misses inside 40, 
he's as surprised as we are. <laughs> yeah. And it just doesn't seem like he, when he's at 30, it doesn't seem like he's doing a lot of thinking. It just seems like he's like, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's right there. So, zoop. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. It just so seems funny. like he looks at the basket like, really? That's not hard? Could, I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought it would be. I love his putt. This is the new Optivice Orbit. Look at this very nice thing. King <laughs> Ba boom. Ba boom. 632 feet, folks, down the hill. There is a mandatory over there to prevent people hyzering, I guess. I don't know, but no one's trying to go over there, anyways. A downhill, throw it as far as you can and hope that it's accurate is basically all you can do. Big elevation drop. I didn't laser to see exactly how much it goes downhill, but it's, I mean, it's everything you got. And for most people, more. Yeah. I mean, it's like playing hole three at Toboggan with no trees. It's like the same shot. Yeah. Yeah. No trees, no OB. Mm -hmm. Just rip it. Yep. Uh, out there in C2 territory for Adam Hammes, a long birdie bid coming up, probably 75 feet away. This has got some potential maybe. I like the low penetrating distance. Can it get a little skip? Definitely going to be over pin high. Uh, not oh, right. really. Yeah, no. pin high-ish. It's so hard to imagine one working back left enough. Like yeah. once you get the drift on it to miss the tree. This guy has the spin and the flex to do it, I think. You can get the distance with the oh, low. that's awful. You're talking about getting back left, Nate. You, you can get the distance by going low for yeah. most of these guys. But mm. to get back left, you have to have the distance and you have to go high. So it's yeah. kind of a combination of both. You can't just buried into the ground. So this is the height that a power player needs to go if they want to get to drift back in time. The angle's weirdly good, so it could... <laughs> he had no surprise there. Yeah, it doesn't have the juice, but beautiful flight. That's full on 95 feet short. I mean, those trees are about 80, I think, mm -hmm. and he's a little short of the trees. Good looking approach here for Goss. Yeah, perfect. Angle look good. <laughs> <laughs> and now some birdie putts. Corey, man, last two holes, chain out, spit out. He almost just dropped six birdies in a row after the double yeah. bogey start. He's feeling really good. The game is looking phenomenal. Had him so far with a slow start. Mm. He does need to start yeah. tacking on some birdies. Even par through the first eight is not it's, what you're looking for. Mm, it's slow. You're just losing ground. But and this is the one tournament where you can then rack off three, four in a row and be right back in it. But It's hard to get those yeah. three to four. Yeah. <laughs> the three to four have kind of passed us that you can get in a row. But, I mean, they're, I mean the holes are birdieable ahead. They're just unlikely to birdie. Well... I think the next three in a row are pretty simple, as far as yeah. far as like yeah your skill level to be able to birdie. I think everybody in the field, it, it's not like the six hundred foot. I agree. The, yeah. the the next three are very gettable. A shout out to Ricky Waisaki who put his drive in the bullseye on that hole. He birdied it both days. He birdied it both days and bullseyed it in the last round. And there are five other birdies in the field on that one. Mm goodness the only one other person in the circle and he's sitting right to your right boys that's what you said josh, long. josh <laughs> editor josh no ger big germ big long germ. props long off the tee on that hole i wish you were playing better and it was on camera that is sick it was cool this is left side backhand that's a miss in the best way okay well it kicks back to the middle but few options on this hole there is a forehand flex play and a backhand down the middle 
this is a classic practice versus tournament hole where you in practice you get up there and you just throw your whole bag and you're like yeah just right and then in the actual tournament all of a sudden the mando shrinks mm -hmm. and you go oh this is a this low is, ceiling <laughs> this is kind of tight <laughs> Aaron, beautiful. Oh. Continue to flip up. Yes. What speed is he throwing here? Mitty. That's pretty good. I love the way that his game has developed over the last two seasons. Austin Turner on the bag? Yeah. He also is one of the twos from the last hole. Threw in a 70-footer. Sweet. Very good shot there. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Pin high. Thank you. Is that Isaac? Yeah. I feel like this is just like Isaac's hole. Georgia. Yeah. He's just like, oh. Home. I don't even notice the Mando still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a practice round. Oh, he's definitely not seeing the mandatories. He's got tunnel vision. Nice low spinny delivery in for the birdie. Another hole with a high par rate at 68%. Birdie comes at a premium here on nine, and mm. Gossage will not be getting it. That's what you had mentioned a couple holes ago. Paul, that distance is at times his bugaboo. When he's dropping 27 footers, He's usually doing all the other things right as well. He's on Jomez, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah essentially, well, that's it. I think with him, it's a, it's actually interesting because he has those like rounds where he makes them all, and he's super confident. And so it's one of those things where you just never know when it's going to happen. You know what I mean? It's not like when he's playing good and he makes them, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. But I'm always a little bit nervous, and that sure. just takes yeah. time for him to make a bunch of them in a row. Sure. And for us to just become believers in that. Otherwise, you know, there's levels to that putting game. When I watch an Isaac putt, I'm just like, meh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we got birthday boy Calvin Heinberg in the lead currently mm. right now. Off to a great start. He eagled hole four and got a whole bunch of other birdies on the front nine. And he is out there doing some good stuff, as well as Alden Harris. That five-hole birdie streak, I mean... How many five-hole birdie streaks have we had at this course thus far this tournament? I can't imagine any other one. Yeah, not many. And not many. That's it for the front nine of round two. We got nine more holes to go, and then we will be halfway through the event. See you then.